There's three pillars to success here, okay? This video is gonna cover just one of them. What is a sales funnel? Is a sales funnel the same thing as a website? Is it different? What is a sales funnel? I'm gonna be answering that today, guys. Stay tuned. All right, look, traditional websites, they just don't work anymore. Traditional websites have too many distractions and they lead too many people off the straight line to the sale. That's why they don't convert. So a sales funnel eliminates all the procrastination. It's a straight line to the sale where people can actually purchase without distractions on your website. That's how we actually set up our Shopify websites with minimal distractions. I mean, some of the stuff that we do on there, guys, it looks a little bit unorthodox, but it's all for a reason. We do this stuff that you'll see in future videos because it's the best practice for Shopify dropshipping. Hey, real quick, two seconds. Subscribe to the show here, guys, so I can keep making these things. When people refer to the sales funnel of a website, it's the process people are taking from when they get to your website to when they leave your website, hopefully with a purchase, right? You want to send them down the whole funnel so they can ultimately purchase from you. That's the goal. Or possibly take some other action on the website that you want them to take. It doesn't always have to be purchase. So is a website and a sales funnel different? Yes, in a way. Your sales funnel is the process of the sale within your website. And your website is the pages and the steps designed for the sales funnel. Let me explain a little bit more in depth on how all of this works. This is a sales funnel. This is how I picture it, so that's how I created it. I almost look at it as a salt shaker, pouring people down the actual funnel. You can put a bunch of people in at the top, but not everybody makes it out the bottom. So your top level of your funnel here is your marketing ad. Okay, so on the marketing ad, that's uh, where you create your ad on like Facebook, or if you want to target more so with Google or Bing, right? So that's just your prospecting ad and how you're actually getting people into your funnel. Now, how people actually get over to your website to get to the next step of the funnel is they click on your ad. Your call to action that's on your ad uh, is what they're going to take action on. They come over to your website and they land on your landing page, specifically your product page. They look through it. I mean, your product page looks great, so they decide you're trustworthy. They want to buy from you. So what do they do next? They add to cart. So once they add your product to their cart, the next step is initiating the checkout. Now, initiating checkout is obviously the step right before the purchase. Now, at the purchase level is where a lot of people think that the sales funnel is done. But it's actually not true. So, there's holes in this funnel though, right? So, you got three holes jabbed in the middle of it there. You got a hole in the product page side of the funnel, the add to cart, the initiate checkout. So, what happens is a little bit of people pour out of there. Actually, a lot of bit of people pour out of there. And what happens is they don't fall completely off and disappear like a lot of people treat it that way, they fall off into another funnel where we actually retarget them to get them back to win them over so they purchase from us. Now at the bottom of the funnel, I created it like this so that there was a section between the purchase and the after sale segment there because at the top there, once somebody purchases from you, that's the end of that funnel, okay? Then that person, once they buy from you, once they purchase, they get put into your next funnel where you go back and you win them over again. You get them to buy from you again. People who buy from you once are always the best people who are gonna buy from you again. A lot of people don't do anything with those people after they purchase from you once, but it's pretty important because you can still pull a lot more sales and a lot more revenue when you go after those people again. This is a very, very broad subject, okay? Every step of this funnel, every single subsidiary of the funnel there, the after the sale, the retargeting, I have videos on this. Now I wanna explain the sales process just a little bit more here. Okay, like we said, the sale process is not completely over once the customer buys from you and they go off on their merry little way. That's not the end of the road because you can still upsell and cross-sell, right? Upsells and cross-sells, that's another song for another time, but um, basically it makes up for 40% of Amazon's income, right? So they're super, super important. Another step a lot of people miss is, is their upsells and their cross-sells. So once somebody buys from you, you still have to continue to upsell from there, right? That's not the end of the road. So I want to explain sales and the psychology side behind it on what makes people actually buy. I want you to think to yourself here, what pair of shoes do you wear almost on a daily basis? Is this pair of shoes the same branded pair of shoes I've been wearing for the past 10 years? Have you bought that brand of shoe more than one time? 
So if it's Nike, for example, Nike would have went bankrupt years ago if people only bought one pair of shoes from them and then that was it. They're counting on you to come back and continue to buy shoes from them. If everybody only bought one pair of shoes from them at one time, then their marketing budget, everything would be destroyed and they wouldn't even be around. We never even would know who they are. They're counting on you to buy back into their brand. And that's how we have to approach our brands with our stores so that we can earn customers' trust to come back and purchase from us more than one time. And just because people don't buy from us the very first time they come over to our website, right? They might add to cart, they might even initiate checkout, and they don't end up purchasing. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to buy from us at all. Because you see, sales is a game of psychology. People need to be wined and dined before they're going to buy from you. Customers need to like, trust, and resonate with you and your brand before they even consider buying from you. You're going to have the unicorns out there that are going to just buy from you on impulse, right? But most people don't. They're going to have to break down their mental barrier in order for that to happen. And that's not just online sales, that's literally all sales. Now, I'm just going to briefly touch on this because I have an entire video dedicated to this that you guys need to go check out. I got it right over here. So go check that out after this video is done and actually learn the psychology behind sales because what I'm teaching there is very good and extremely important to your success. And the main backbone to a sale is a principle called the mere exposure effect. Now the mere exposure effect states that people have to like, trust, and resonate with you before they buy from you. The more you're exposed to somebody, whether it's a positive or a negative experience, the more that they're going to like, trust, and resonate with you. So you need to make multiple points of contact with potential customers before they're going to buy from you. So if you're going business to business selling a service, like we'll throw this e-commerce stuff aside because I want to say a metaphor here. And I know a lot of you guys watching this here are probably salesmen of some sort. Everybody's a salesman. If you're going door to door selling, it's a numbers game in a sense that it's not how many doors can you knock on, it's how many of the same doors can you knock on. Get what I mean? Just because somebody says no, they're not interested, they're not going to buy from you, doesn't mean no. Not interested is still a level of interest. Because before, they had no idea you existed. They had no idea your service existed or your product. Okay? But now, they see your product and they've already made that psychological decision in their head that they're not interested. Now they're on the interest scale. They may be at the bottom of it. Now we got to move them to a 10 out of 10 instead of a 1 out of 10 or a 0 out of 10. And this is the sales process. Make those points of contact over and over and over again, and things are going to be crazy for your business. You can't have fear in this. So when we're launching our ads for our drop shipping stores, you can't be scared to target the same people over and over and over again. Like you can't be afraid of people commenting on your ads, saying negative things to you or about your brand or company. You just have to do it. So this video is just one of the pillars to success that I use to have massive success online. Okay, Pillar number one, your website and your funnel. Because that has to be on point if people are going to buy from you. Pillar number two, the actual products that you're selling have to be on point. Pillar number three is your marketing or how are you getting your brand awareness out there. So you got three of them, they're all equally important and you have to have them all on point. So that's all for this video. Make sure you check out the other two because they're super, super important. And I have both links down in the description. We'll see you guys over at those videos.